Joel Locke. I'm Rob Zombie's front of house engineer. Today we're going to look at the Midas Pro 9 and integrating waves into the Midas Pro 9 and any Midas Pro series or 2C2-2 console. Uh, the reason I choose the Pro 9 console is because it sounds the best to me. I think it has the best sounding front end of any digital board. You can saturate it like an analog desk, run it in the red, and you don't pay any of the digital penalties like a normal digital console. You can run it like an analog desk. To me, it's you know it's basically a, a digital XL4. Um, you know, there's you know all you Midas users, you know the power of our consoles. Even your 2C users, your, two, your Midas Pro 2 users, all the way through the XL8. You know, and we know we have a powerful tool here. But what could we do to make it better? Well, what we can do to make it better is we can integrate waves into our Midas and have a complete set of Waves plugins in our Midas console. Yeah, I know you're salivating on that one. It's a good thing. So how do we do this? What's our magical chain of events to make this Waves universe possible in our Midas? Well, it's not as complicated as you think. All we do is we come out of one of our AES-50 ports out of the back of the console via Cat5 cable into our Clark DN9650 network bridge. And what the network bridge is doing is it's converting our AES-50 signal into MADI. Coming out of that via optical MADI into the Sonnet chassis features our RME FX card, which is 194 channels in, 196 channels out, and three full MADI universes. That being said, that now interconnects via Thunderbolt directly to our laptop. And that's basically the links in our chain to get waves onto your Midas. Once you're up and running, you can control everything from your console. There's no need to be reaching for your laptop or, or fiddling while you're mixing. It's eyes forward, hands on the console. Everything can be controlled from the two screens. Our hands are on the faders. If we have to make changes, we can easily make changes just by using our KVM switches. Brings up our device. We have full parameter control. We have full control of our computer with my hands never leaving the console. Uh, I'm always on the console. Bring back up my default screens. We're back in default. Oh, it's that easy to get the waves rack back up again when we need it. My show being very uh, cue specific, I really have to keep my hands on faders and buttons and things. I can't be turning around trying to mess with stuff. So this really makes this thing even more desirable because I don't have to uh, reach for anything and take my eyes off my show. Also, the RME card gives us MIDI ability, so I have 37 snapshots on my show. And what I'm doing is I have a scene for each thing on my waves rack. So my MIDI from the RME also triggers my waves rack changes. So again, it's not manually. I don't have to keep reaching over during every song and making changes. I can mix the show and not worry about my uh, waves rack and what it's doing. I know it's coming up on the right scenes. So let's take a look at one of some of the things from Waves I am using during the show. Um, looking at Rob's vocal right here, we're running an HEQ, which is the equalizer with the built-in analyzer and the actual musical note on the keyboard. So you can transpose yourself pretty well that way. And that's just doing some contour work. We have a King Speech, which I use for several songs for kind of that telephone megaphone kind of sound. Great, uh, great plugin. Uh, definitely recommend that if you're looking for that type of thing, the megaphone or the telephone sounding microphone. Uh, the driver, one knob driver, I use for actual distortion on the vocal. Uh, works great, one knob, no muss, no fuss. Can't say much more about that. And then the good old C6 to kind of contour everything after it comes out the back end of it. Because inherently the distortion and the King speech make it kind of peaky at like 800 to 1.2K. So you have to do some squeezing and some smashing to get it to fit where you want it to. We're using a Pugue compressor on the acoustic guitar. Or just some nice mellow compression with a great algorithm. Uh, and then a lot of C4s and C6s are being used throughout. Now let's take a look at Piggy's vocal. Uh, here we're using three different plugins in a chain. We've got an Arvox into a C6 into a doubler. Pretty simple stuff straight ahead. Nothing that complicated. Something that you could do at home. Yeah, moving around, you know, we have that same, pretty much the same setup on John 5's vocals. Uh, we're using the uh, in-phase tool on the bass, which is a great tool. It basically gives us two inputs and we can compare the two traces and actually come up with the proper delay time for absolutely perfect phasing. 
and then add into our lovely C6. And you know, there's a, there's a plethora of C6s and C4s throughout this. Uh, haven't gone super crazy yet. I'm still, you know, learning the Waves plugins myself and I'm still adding every day and experimenting. So it's, it's definitely a work in progress, but um, I'm finding that the tools are becoming invaluable and I can't live without some of them. On a side note, let's talk about how I'm running Pro Tools through the Midas. I know all of you are very interested in that as well, having virtual sound check, having the ability to record every night. Well, if, knowing the Midas consoles as we do, or if we don't, we have three AES-50 ports in the back of a Pro Series desk. Well, normally I could do 62 channels of Pro Tools, but because I'm also using Waves, I need 24 ins and outs for the Waves. So what we decided to do is run 48 tracks of Pro Tools and then the 24 of Waves, and that fills up our three AES-50 holes. So what we do is we come out of the console via the two AES-50 ports, into another Clark DN 9650 network bridge converting to MADI. Out of the MADI and the network bridge into an Avid MADI I.O. directly into the Pro Tools HD9. Uh, as you see here, I have full playback ability, full recording ability. Uh, it's, you know, it's just as good as anything else, if not better, because it's Pro Tools, and I have it through the Midas. It's a one button operation on the Midas, all I have to do is tell preferences to be tape returns and the board is ready to receive a virtual sound check. It's that simple. It really is two Cat5 cables, plug and play. I'd like to thank my friend Greg Price at Martini Music for putting this rig together to my spec. It's been flawless the entire tour. I use it every day. I record every night, virtual sound check every day. It's smooth like butter. Well, there you go, everybody. And, uh, I'm Joel Lonke, and uh, you've just got a tour of my Pro 9 with Waves Native running and Pro Tools all running through the Midas. And you can do this, too, at home. Don't be scared. It will work, and it will work great. Thanks for watching Unique Squared. And check out some other engineers' videos on Waves Live from Greg Price and Pooch. They're very informative, and you will learn something. <laughs>